What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TWA Motorsports and today, well I figured we'd do something a little different. I get a lot of questions, uh, especially over the course of the time I've been making YouTube videos about like how do you wash your cars, what do you use, so on and so forth. So um, now while I don't use this on everything and you'll see, you know, kind of the, this is a little bit of a different animal, but I figured what a good time to make this um, like now because of the Sierra. And it's kind of one of those things where the Sierra is like borderline paint cracking issues and whatnot, especially on the hood and the top. And so I really, guys, I want to get on this, get it washed, uh, get some of the, the junk off the hood. I'm really not concerned right now about the sides, uh, but there's a bunch of crap setting on it and I want to get that off. I also want to wash it. And so I figured it'd be a good time to make this video and show you kind of what my methods are. Now, the impatient side of me has messed with a couple spots on the hood. You can see that there. And I just did that with a little bit of M100 on a rag by hand. So I really think this is more of an oxidation issue. I think, you know, obviously there's spots that, you know, we're not going to be able to get anything done with aside from paint. But at the same time, I think we can make it look a lot better. And if we jump on it now, I'm thinking maybe we won't have to paint the roof at least. Now the hood... You know, there, you, like I don't think we're going to be able to do anything. I think we'll be able to clean it up, but like this big spot right here, you know, we're not going to be able to do anything with that. But this truck, um, I think, is set outside a lot, and the the main reason I think that is because of the top. But if you guys, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but there's a ton of junk like in between the cab. Now I'm not going to take the bed off or anything crazy like that, but. I'm gonna to try to get my sprayer down there and at least hose some of that junk off. And like I said, there's bugs on it, it's been setting. And so let's talk about what we're gonna be using. There's gonna be a lot of time lapse in this video, guys, and I picked probably the worst day because the wind is going nuts out there. But first of all, guys, I use a three bucket method. I start by filling that up with a garden hose because if you try to fill it up with a pressure washer, you're just gonna be fighting that. Um, I like to fill it up with a garden hose because you don't have a ton of pressure. So I've got a, a clean wash bucket. I have a microfiber mitt and towel in this one with some soap. And this is the soap that I generally use, guys, is Chemical Guys Auto Wash. It's uh, Glossworks. I'll list all this stuff in the description, but I just really like this stuff. And this is the method that I use on every vehicle when I'm washing them. So I don't always use my power washer but i do always use a three bucket method and the third bucket so we got our clean water our wash bucket for the car third bucket is for wheels only so i've got a couple scrub brushes in there i've got some things to get inside the wheel and um and then another microfiber towel that i wipe all the wheels down with so that is the method that i use on everything so like just a what i would call a regular wash on like the yukon out there or any of the vehicles that don't need crazy amount of work, that is what I use. Now, this I'm really excited about, guys. I've always had a gas-powered power washer. I decided to buy this electric one, and I love this thing, guys. It's you, It doesn't run all the time. You literally come over here and hit it with your foot. It's on right now, actually, and it doesn't create pressure until we need it. So all we have to do is squeeze our trigger. I bought this line set separately because the line that comes with it kind of sucks. I also bought this um, nozzle separately. These are quick disconnects on the nozzle and the unit itself. And then I wanted a sh I wanted the ability to go between like a short one like this and then the long one. So these are the other things that came with that. So you've got the long attachment so you can get, you know, like I'll probably use that a little bit. Uh, aside from that, you also get several different tips, I believe. I generally use that yellow tip. And then I got this guy, which I have filled up with this and warm water. And this is like your foam cannon. So the foam cannon, the line, and this all come as one set. Makes it really nice, and you guys are gonna get to see that in action. Now, I very, I very rarely use this unless the car's really bad. So speaking of bad, Car Pro Iron X, guys, um, that's one of those things that takes all the fallout. So, like, you know, when this thing sets out, it gets a bunch of iron and just random fallout from just sitting outside. And so I'm going to put some of this on there as well. And I'm, I'm hoping I can't, I don't have to fight too much of the wind. But the main parts that I'm worried about are the hood and the top. 
And so I don't, I, you know, you don't have to spray this all over the car, although it is a good idea. Now this thing does not seem to have a bunch of tar on it. Um, we're just gonna see what this stuff does. I use this a lot, especially before I'm like buffing or anything. So we're gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna start by just rinsing this thing down. So we're gonna get, uh, I'm probably gonna put the wand on. So like, or the, the extended reach here. We're gonna get it rinsed off. Once we get it rinsed off, then we're gonna start by spraying the Car Pro on the hood. Uh, I'll probably, you know, kind of focus on the areas that face up. So like maybe the top of the fenders back there, uh, the top of the fenders here. I'm not gonna worry about spraying the sides with this. I know a lot of people do. Uh, I don't have a lot left in here. This stuff is very expensive and it smells terrible, guys, if you're gonna be using it, but it does work really good. On white cars and lighter cars, you can see it turns purple when it's doing something. On these dark cars, I don't know that I'll be able to show you guys that, but we'll try. So either way, that's our first step. Let's get this thing rinsed off. And uh, once we do that, we'll move on to like foaming it up. We'll rinse it off again, and then we will go to, on to a wash. set we'll give it about five minutes and then we'll go to rinse again guys about five minutes um i did go ahead and pull there's a there was a liner in the bed it's just like a mat i pulled that out so we could kind of rinse the bed out but let's get this thing rinsed off sure that you get all that stuff off because it's really going to change the way uh, your soap reacts anyway so I went over it a couple times we're gonna change this up now we've got our nozzle off um, and we're gonna move over to the foam pan and of course you guys can see the Sun decided to poke out which is terrible you don't want to wash in the Sun and so I've kind of closed the garage door but this is what we've got and you you can kind of make adjustments on which direction it's going and the amount that it's putting through. I will tell you guys, foam cannons burn 
a lot, a lot of soap. Uh, and I generally don't use this a lot unless the car is really, really dirty um, because we're ultimately going to use the wash buckets. I just use this to get the big stuff off. I've never washed this thing, have no idea how much stuff it's got in the paint. And so it's always a good idea to use this. I know a lot of people like live by these, but guys, I generally foam it, let it set, and then I rinse it, and then I go to my bucket method. Some people choose, if your vehicle's a little cleaner, you can foam it, and if you're not in the sun and there's no wind, you can foam it and then use your mitt and your brushes and whatnot. But that's not the, the method that I use just because of the type of water that I have. And, um, and the sun's out and the wind's blowing today. So either way, let's get it started and uh, you'll kind of see what this looks like. <laughs> Like I said, you can see, got it foamed up. This thing makes like a shaving cream style foam. Uh, I'm sure there's different soaps out there, guys, but we're gonna let that set for just a minute. We're not gonna get too crazy because the sun's on the back and then we're gonna rinse it off. I probably am just going to use the short trigger to rinse though. got this thing rinsed off it's time to go to hand washing so I've got this little brush uh, which comes in really handy guys so these lug nut holes that you can never get clean but there's always dust setting in I like to use these and this thing's gonna get a different set of wheels down the road but you know these are brand new I'd like to keep them nice but this also works for areas like here and your brake calipers which these aren't painted so it's just gonna rust them more if I do that, but really kind of nice and handy to have. Once I do that, this wheel is not gonna be the funnest wheel to clean, just based off the fact, I use this around the Dawson too. Once we do that, I've got this guy to get kind of in the barrel of the wheel, which is nice. Sometimes I use that on the, um, I've got another one, but it's completely covered in dirt right now that you can bend, which makes it nice to get behind the spokes. But this works. This is by Chemical Guys too, I believe. And I do everything kind of quickly, like I said guys, because I've got a lot of mineral in my water, so the car setting with, or the truck setting with a bunch of stuff on it right now is a terrible, terrible idea. I also go around the tire with just a stiff brush, kind of helps get all the junk off. And then generally what I do guys is I rinse and then we use our microfiber towel here to do the spokes in the wheels. 
So I'm gonna see if we can do that real quick and then we'll rinse it off. I won't show you guys every wheel, just kinda wanted to show you what I'm doing all the way around. And I like to start, this is generally where I start when I'm not using the power washer. I'll sit down and not get the car all wet so I'm not having to worry about it spotting while I'm doing the wheels. But this is a little bit of a different beast. And we're gonna attempt to do a little bit of paint correction here. So, you know, not as big a deal. And it has zero wax on it. That helps it kind of not spot as much, I guess. Just kind of sheets off. I like like a five spoke wheel, like the Tahoe wheels on my green track. Man, they're way easier to clean than this. Of course, that truck never gets, doesn't normally get daily driven, so that stays a little cleaner. So we're gonna rinse this thing off. The other thing generally I'll do, this, these aren't bad, but I will wash the inner liners. I've got another brush to scrub in there, but these aren't, this isn't bad. Now that we're finished with all the wheels, uh, like I said, I wasn't gonna show you guys all that. We're gonna go with the two bucket method. Got a rinse bucket with clean water. And I've got my bucket here with soap and rags. I'm gonna. I put this together earlier. They both have grip guards in them, by the way. So it's not, look guys, this probably isn't as important on this truck as it is on like my dailies. Uh, well, this is a daily, but I'm saying like cars that <laughs> haven't had the paint touched at all. So what I do is I generally try to do like the cab and the hood. And then we go, uh, we rinse it off. We put these in the clean rinse bucket, kind of rinse them out. Man, this paint. That's the method that I use. And I like to use, I know that a lot of people just use the microfiber mitt. It's a good idea to put some soap inside of the mitt. I don't put it on my hand, I don't, I, I don't know, I just don't like the way it works. So once we get the cab, and I'm going to go across the top of the bed here, you kind of know you start to run out of suds. We'll rinse this off before it dries. And move on. We got the whole truck washed down. 
And generally, guys, I will tell you that you notice that after I did the cab, I went all the way down the door. If you're not using the foam cannon, I think you should probably choose a, that body line, let's say right above the chrome, because there's generally a ton of junk underneath. The fact that we used the foam cannon and rinsed it, that takes that big junk off and didn't make me uh, as crazy about going all the way down to the rocker um, with one swipe. So all the way down the bottom, all the way up to the top. And the fact that this truck, you know, isn't in stellar shape as far as paint goes, which we're trying to fix. But like on the Yukon or something like the green truck, I stay above that body line go all the way around the truck. And then the very last thing I do is go to the bottom just because if it does scratch, it keeps it down low. You're not dragging, you know, crap up to the top of the truck. So either way, I know I, I just want to tell you guys that because I don't normally do it that way. So either way, I'm going to rinse it off. When you use a foam cannon, you think you've got it rinsed. But you need to go through all these little cracks and crevices. There's a ton of foam that comes out of that thing and inevitably there's still some there. So we're gonna rinse it really well. I'm also gonna rinse all the soap kind of out of the garage and then we'll dry it. At this point it's time to dry it and there's several things out there guys i've got a couple waffle weave towels that i use but they're dirty right now you can just use a microfiber and um look i know a lot of people will use different things i sometimes use i've got an electric uh, blower which i may use to like blow the cracks and crevices out but look we're this this paint's terrible so we're just going to use this get this thing dried down. And uh, I kind of like to go quickly, just like I said, because guys, I have hard water, a ton of minerals in it, so you don't want to leave it set on there. So you'll probably see me start back there in the back where it's kind of poking out of the garage and getting the sun on it. You would think I would be finished, right? So it's dry. And for the most part it is, you know, all the panels seem to be dry, but I've got this cheapy electric. I need to get a battery powered one, a battery powered electric, but I'm going to blow out, you know, the main places like in the crack of the hood and the doors around the door handles, around the mirror, stuff like that, guys, that stuff will drip out for days. And so this is normally what I use after I wipe it down. Um, if it's got a ton of like coating on it, sometimes I can get away with just using this and then wiping up the excess when I'm finished, but this has nothing on it. So we're gonna go through, blow out the lug nut, oh, the lug nut holes, uh, like I said, all the cracks, and then we'll wipe that down. And uh, that should be it as far as getting it washed and dried.
now that we've got it blown off, dried off, here's my next step. Um, and actually is the last step when I'm just doing a wash. Okay, so this is what I do, aside from the foam cannon, this is what I do every time I wash a vehicle. So we've got, obviously, everything dried off, but the door jams, guys, people underestimate the door jams and how much they cause rust. But if you wipe these down, and I use generally a couple towels, if this one gets soaking wet, then we switch over to another one. But this just gives us the ability to wipe out all that dust. And look, one of the first things you see when you step into a vehicle is the door jam. And so when I look into a vehicle and the door jam's just filthy, I know generally they haven't taken great care of it. This doesn't take long, maybe five minutes to wipe, especially on like a regular cab truck, you know, on the Denali, we have the rear gate and whatnot, but I'll do this here and I'm gonna do it under the hood on this truck. But on a regular cab, you get kind of lucky because like I said, there's not as much to wipe down. But I go along the bottom of the door, obviously the jam here, in the hinges up there. I even go in this little rubber channel and uh, just helps to keep things nice and clean. And honestly, guys, on these trucks, helps to keep it from rusting. So we'll get this all finished and then we'll move on. Ultimately, guys, this is what um, it looks like when it's all finished. Now, does it look better? Yeah, we've got a big chunk of dirt off, but I mean, look, you can really see that section that I messed with. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it streaks. I don't know if you guys can see the streaks and that's probably from it pulling some of that junk off, like that fallout I was talking about when I used the CarPro uh, Iron X. So it needs a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, but like I said, guys, I'm more afraid that if I don't do it now, we're gonna be painting certain areas. You know, the sides don't bother me as much on these trucks. So this particular model with the step side, your hood, your roof, and the top of your rear um, fenders back here, these are plastic. And with this being black, it's going to, it's not gonna hold up as well. And so if you see the clear breaks on these trucks, those are the three places where the clear generally breaks up. You know, you generally don't see it on the door or the fenders unless it's been painted before. Uh, maybe the top side of the fenders just a little bit. You can see the paints broke through right there. Um, but ultimately that's how I wash a vehicle. And I, I told you guys I was gonna do some paint correction in this video, I've ran out of time. And so I'm going to make a separate video uh, doing some paint correction on this truck. So uh, I probably am going to start filming some of that today, but I just don't have enough time to get um, a big section to show you guys. But anyway, uh, like I said, I love my new power washer. Guys, like I said, you just click. That's turned off now. I should have turned it off earlier, but it doesn't run unless you're using it, which is nice. You don't have to go back and start it. Uh, you can it, it works perfect for the garage and luckily I have water in my garage. But anyway, guys, this, like I said, is the way I do a majority of the cleanups. So it takes me about three hours to wash and dry a vehicle, especially like the Yukon, about two and a half to three hours to do it. Uh, I think that the door jams are very important. I think, I don't think you have to use the foam cannon unless you're just trying to break up some bugs. A lot of times if you foam cannon and let that set on those bugs, uh, you'll get a lot of that, but rinsing it with a power washer really helps get the bugs off. The foam cannon helps as well, but I generally just use the hose and the three bucket method. And the reason I use three buckets, like I said earlier, um, we're transferring hopefully the dirt with all of them having grit guards from one to the other. And then on the wheels, I use a separate one because all the brake dust is metallic and you don't want to be washing that and then moving it back onto your paint. But look, there's a lot of videos out there, the guys that are, do this better than me. This is just the method that I choose, guys, and um, it, it, takes, it takes some time. So I get frustrated when I have to go drive something I just washed because I spend so much time washing it or if it rains or something. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there and hit that subscribe button. Of course, ring the bell icon. Like always, that notifies you when we drop a new video and stay tuned to see us get some paint correction on this.